All right, let's go ahead and start the meeting because I know everybody's got uh, places they want to go afterwards, maybe to the dinner table. But um, uh, anybody that comes in late, uh, if you'll just make sure they get a seat, that'd be great. Uh, I want to start by thanking all of you that are here tonight for coming. Uh, we appreciate uh, you taking the time to be here tonight. Uh, we welcome your input. Uh, we will take everything you say into serious consideration. And um, uh, and I, I will ask you when, uh, if you'll take the time right now to silence your cell phones. And uh, when you, if you uh, want to uh, speak at the microphone, I ask that you speak into the microphone. If you need it adjusted, you know, Randy or somebody can lower it or raise it. But speak into the microphone. Uh, it, this is a big room. We want to make sure that, you know, your voice is heard, uh, if you'll do that. And while somebody is speaking, let's be considerate and, and not be chattering because it, it's, it's a courageous thing to get up and speak in front of people. So uh, please be respectful and let's, let's listen to what they have to say. And with that, I'm Carolyn Walker. I am the chairman of the school board, and I want to take just a minute uh, if you've never been to any of our meetings or watched them on TV, uh, to make sure everybody introduces themselves. And I'll start here with T.W. Uh, T.W. Allen, I'm from the uh, Bellhaven area, represent that Bellhaven area. E.C.P. Aurora. Terry Draper, Long Acre District. Like I said, Carolyn Walker, and I feel like I represent everybody, but I, ain't, I do live in Washington. Matthew Cheeseman, Superintendent. Uh, Terry Williams, Chocolate Wood. Booth, Washington. And Butch Oliver is on his way. I'm sure he's got caught by the storm, but he will be here shortly. He represents the Bath District. And Mr. Michael Bilbro, who also lives in Washington, um, is out of state right now. Uh, with that, I am going to turn things over to Mr. Cheeseman. Thank you. Good evening. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we're here this evening to share information with you, specifically around choices that the Beaufort County Schools Board of Education will have to make um, shortly and likely sometime during their board meeting next Tuesday night. Considering we are looking at the alternative learning programs specifically for those students uh, who have greater opportunities around credit recovery but also credit advancement in order to ensure that they have a setting that is conducive uh, to their learning. And so considering that the alternative learning program has been housed here at the Ed Tech Center and we're very excited with the success that they've had this past year with, I believe, uh, approximately 49 graduates. So with that, I do applaud the teachers and, and all of the staff here at EdTech, including the principal, Ms. Uh, Vicki Hamill. But considering as you look at budgetary shortfalls um, and also how do you actually support not only fiscally, but also with personnel and resources, an opportunity for a high quality education well, we're looking at the alternative learning program and specifically where it's housed and what opportunities we could have for that. But on the back end of that, we're also looking at the Ed Tech Center specifically around what does it cost to keep it open, what does it cost to maintain, and what potential costs will surprise us in the near future around what we're going to have to fix, repair, and potentially upgrade. So with that, there are two models that are actually on the table that the board will consider for next year, two considerations. And one of those considerations is to specifically leave the alternative learning program here at EdTech. So that is consideration number one. However, based off of the budget and based off of the staffing allotments and based off of the resource allotments, we would have to consolidate the staff and meaning that we would have to go into a blended learning approach, meaning some of that would be teacher-based, some of that would be facilitator-based, and some of that would be online learning with a facilitator present. In addition to that, we would then have to look at how the building is used, meaning what wings would be open, what wings would be closed, what are the energy costs associated with that, what are the resource uh, requirements of that. Um, but that is the model, is looking at EdTech, keeping it where it is right now, knowing that you would consolidate personnel and some of the resources. The second model that would help us in order to make sure that the students had a viable opportunity and also clear a nearly $600,000 shortfall is to move the alternative learning program, meaning that educational institution 
to Southside High School. And in that model, I believe you should have a map in front of you of what that model specifically would look like in terms of its location. Now, part of looking at Southside High School means that you're utilizing a facility that in an ORED study sponsored by our county showed that Southside High School was not at capacity. So we're looking at how we can utilize Southside High School specifically around space that would be available for this alternative learning program. So if you look at the map that I gave you or someone else in the room has handed to you on that single sheet of paper, you should see a, an overview of all of the classrooms and the facility of Southside. On the right hand side where you see ALP and numbers one through seven, you see a map that shows you specifically where seven classrooms would be listed or utilized for the alternative learning program. In these seven classrooms, it would include a principal office, it would include an EC resource room, it would include um, a teacher or more than one teacher, including up to three facilitators. And of course, that room seven that you're seeing is marked would be a technology lab, possibly for coding and other curriculum items for students. And so what you're looking at on the far right hand side of the map is an entrance exit door where students will be dropped off coming in by transportation by bus. Uh, so they would be monitored coming into that wing. Remember, this is not a model that would include middle school students as the board has elected to keep Snowden and their six through eight middle school model at Snowden Elementary School. So just to correct any uh, forecasting of confusion, this is solely for Southside High School's grades nine through 12 students and also alternative learning program. So with that, you would have restrooms right across from room seven. You would also have a teacher lounge there, meaning some type of prep room for teachers. And then the foods lab and the high school business lab would, rem would remain there as there are typically CTE classrooms for Southside High School. The nice part about this is these are students who would be going to Southside High School through the alternative learning program who are part of the Pathways program. These are not students who would be co-mixed into a high school that have been known to be violent offenders. These are not people who have been dealing with guns and knives and, and other types of criminal activity. These are based on students who need additional assistance, <coughs> students who need a great environment for learning, students who need to be loved in that manner. But in short, students would be safe in this environment also. So in short, the CTE labs that are present between room six and seven on your map, uh, you would have some crossover with Southside High School based on scheduling. Now the nice part about this design, the way Southside High School has actually arranged their, um, their schedule, is it would not be one-to-one, -one, meaning Southside High School students would have a bell schedule that is slightly different than your alternative learning program. So they would not actually be in the hallways at the same time. Um, so supervision of students should be at its premium. In addition to that, for Southside High School and for the alternative lear learning program, they would be able to share some facilities, including the cafeteria, but at different times. So the way Rick Anderson has actually put together the high school bell schedule, the students of Southside High School would eat at a different time as the students of, of the alternative learning program, but those students could be able to share a cafeteria also potentially gym space, auditorium space. So this will be a conducive environment that puts them in a safe learning environment, uh, one that has been well upkept over time. The other nice part of the alternative learning program, if you look at room number four there, this is specifically set to bring in a professional around wellness. An individual who is currently in our district who would be trained or is receiving training over time around how to help students with their wellness and that individual would check in with each one of these students weekly, meaning how are we caring for these individuals who are in the alternative learning program, checking in with families as to why the students may have not come to school, checking in with these students around some of the barriers that they're facing both as a student but also in their personal lives. So essentially we're assigning an adult to several of these students um, to really just make sure that they're doing well and trying to help them in their lives. So considering there are questions that still come up, we still have questions around transportation, but we believe that alternative learning program students and pathways will be transported by school bus as they currently already take the school bus with other high school students and other high school campuses. So we don't see an issue in that regard. Um, but as for why you keep the alternative learning program intact, 
So the way the state of North Carolina looks at your schools, by picking up its entire program, moving it to South Side, but maintaining its name and maintaining the principal means that you're maintaining the school. It just happens to be at a different location. So considering all of your academic resources and all of your staffing resources would be considered as if you had two different schools at one site. So meaning you can track the academics of our alternative learning program and you can track the academics of your Southside High School program separately. In addition to that, the staff of Southside High School could be utilized to provide alternative uh, teaching opportunities, meaning with a separate stipend, should we have funding to do that, to occasionally come in and work with our alternative learning students if they were having trouble with an online model, if they were having trouble in a laboratory setting, or they just needed additional support in that regard with their academics. So recognizing that your pathway students need 22 credits to graduate, um, the reason there is a difference or what allows a difference is that they typically do not have enough electives or we don't offer enough electives, but there may be opportunities of some sharing there with additional funding mechanisms. So in short, there's two options for the board to take a look at. Again, I repeat, option one would be to keep the alternative learning program here at EdTech and specifically to run it with a uh, smaller amount of staff in a blended learning environment. Or option two would be to move the Southside High School as the alternative learning program at Southside High School with a reduction in staff and a blended learning environment. So if you look at option two then, and you think about EdTech, what happens to the EdTech building? Well, specifically this room will be utilized by the Board of Education and our other schools for that matter if they need a training space. Uh, this building specifically is utilized by North Carolina Department of Public Instruction to put on regional trainings. So this is still a hub for activities from other school districts and our own teachers and our TAs and our staff to learn in that regard. The annex behind you in this building right now, the long building behind you, would be utilized specifically for district personnel, specifically of directors of programs and preparation space for much of the summertime rollout that we do with our teachers and preparation, but also there's two or three spaces in that back annex that we utilize for professional development, meeting space, um, and storage space for that matter. The remainder of the building, each actual hallway is on a different circuit, so in fact, you could close down the building or close off the wings for energy savings. The cafeteria actually right now is run off of a grant that allows us a community partnership for summertime feeding. All of that material would stay in the cafeteria and you could utilize that again next summer for the summer feeding program. Currently we have multiple contracts and or memorandums of understanding with other agencies and organizations that allow the use of our gymnasium here on the EdTech campus. So all of those contracts and, and, and MOUs uh, would stay intact <coughs> through the end of this summer into the fall until those programs have concluded and then consideration by the Board of Education would be given for use in the future time. So with that, two items that the Board will look at again next Tuesday in consideration of what they should do with their alternative learning program um, as they face a nearly $600,000 uh, budget requirement for that. Does the board have anything that you would like me to add or you'd like to add yourself before we entertain questions? I think I've covered it, but in case you have other things you'd like. All right, so with that, if you have questions, we would love for you to come to the microphone and please state your name. We're going to take, take notes to the best of our ability should you have questions, but also solutions that we might be able to um, entertain and work on before we get to Tuesday night where the board will consider what they should be doing. So at this time, if anyone would like to step to the microphone and ask our board any type of question. I think it's on. Hello. Hello, yes. if you can state your name. My name is Anita Purser. I have a Southside student. Come on. Um, I am curious, you said that the nonviolent, non drug, whatever, students would be housed to Southside High School. Where there. would the remaining students be put? Typically, you would identify on a case-by-case -case basis students, you know, who may have had, had some violent issues or other type of criminal issues. You would look at them on possible homebound activity, meaning educators would travel to their space 
or a neutral space, meaning if it happens to be a student that doesn't have a, a typical designated home, then you would identify a space where we can educate them accordingly. Okay, my second thing was, um, it's my understanding, and I may be completely wrong, um, the EdTech program is to take children that are, are not either provided for or need extra assistance, either educationally or socially, to take them out of the environment that they're currently in to put them in a new environment to help boost their educational experience. Mm -hmm. If you're taking them and putting them in a different hallway, how is that changing their environment? Sure. Well, first of all, many of the actual alternative learning program students, and that's the way I'll say it to you, mm -hmm. because they're not identified by their building. So they're identified because they're in a pathways program. So these are students who have been um, relocated from other school sites specifically. So the students in the pathways program are typically students who may have just fallen behind, had life issues, may have become homeless from a storm, may have had a family issue of illness, uh, may have been pregnant or coming back, but there's been something in their lives that have changed. So therefore, they are still very capable of doing the work. Now, to answer your question, sure, they might not be in their home schools anymore. And so moving them to Southside High School is still a change of location, but in this case, it would be a change of location into a more conducive learning environment, specifically around what the building would provide. Now, when you look at the map specifically and you see the vertical line that's drawn between the one and the spaces, this is where the school would separate between Southside High School. There would school. be a physical barrier there? It's not a physical barrier. Okay, no. I mean, I know there's not one there now. I'm just no. asking, would there be one put there? It's not a physical barrier because these are young people who deserve the same rights and privileges of an education as the students in any one of our other buildings who should still be treated with respect Absolutely. because they are not... They are not specifically designated as criminals of society, but these are students who need a chance and need an opportunity. And so considering that, um, the transition is specifically adults right there where the principal's office would be, one of our other directors sitting in, in room four there who will be working with students. But in short, these are you know, not roadblocks that say you can't come past this marker. The other how part many of that, students are you thinking, I mean, because you're saying, you know, 35. you only have seven classrooms, you know, how many yeah, students? You look, in Pathways program right now, you have 31 registered with 11 on a waiting list, so you're about at 40, 42. So this is not an entire school, like a volume that you would think in the back of your mind. So where were the other students that come currently here? Because you just graduated 50-some students, is that correct? You gradu graduated 49 kids, yeah. yes. Um, you know, so, okay, if you have 50 in that graduating class, how many is in the next one? So they didn't you, all attend physically here. Some of them were online students. Okay. Right, and some of those actually were mid-year. So considering that, there is a transition. So some of them finish at different times of the year. Some of them enter in at different times of the year. Sometimes there's behaviors or circumstances in their lives, say in November or December, that would help them if they come into an alternative learning program. And they might actually transition out in March or April. So there is some fluctuation in that regard. But this is not a school that would so much so grow that it would take over south side because you're actually in control of the process okay well thank you for great your questions time. i really thank appreciate you your so effort. much hi my name is naomi tris cobb summers and my son was one of those 49 that just graduated from um ed tech um thank you my question is um my son um walked to school because we live a few blocks over, and he, he's typical of a lot of the students that attend this program because, because he only had one class or two classes um, the second semester. The first semester, he was all day. Second semester, he only had two classes. So what happens when students only have one or two classes that they need to complete during that semester? And then, I mean, wh what happens to them then? It's a great question. So mm -hmm. we'll have to look at their education individually and look at transportation oppor opportunities to bring them to Southside High School. Mm -hmm. Also potential online with facilitator opportunity. So it's really going to be based off of what their needs are at the current moment. So I recognize that he may have walked to school to do that one or two classes, mm -hmm. but in short we would have specific transportation areas that would pick up students to take them to Southside High School and then also to bring them back to their areas. But and that is something yeah. that we're still working on, but that's okay. a great question. Because of some of the various academies that are at different schools, we already have uh, uh, buses that are traveling to and from 
right. of the schools at different times. But what I, what, if, if we go in that direction, one of the things I would love to see is students like your son, mm -hmm. who may only have two classes, would then have an opportunity to take some other courses that would either give him college credit or might give him, if he's trying to get a vocation, might give him an opportunity to get into a vocational program that is offered that, that we can't offer here because the numbers just don't support it. So uh, I would love to see students like him really have many more opportunities um, than what they've had. You know, we try to give them as much as we can, but when your numbers don't support it, it's, it's really difficult. And uh, uh, But that would that would be my goal, is that we'd be able to do, give them a lot more than, than what we can now. All right, thank you. Thank you thank very you. much. Good evening. And my very friend, Barbara. And I just have some questions. And if, you, if people can't hear, you could repeat what I asked, and then maybe they could hear what I'm saying. Sure. Um, I know the image is when you say alternative school, it's, it's like some people think we have criminals at the school. Right. And that's the perception that most people have. So my concern is when you, you house these students at another school, is there going to be some kind of diversity class or something for teachers? Because the first thing they might say, like, they could threaten the children, like, okay, we're going to send you all over there to that bad school or right. something like that. And that's not right. You know, they, you know some kids just have a learn a different way. You're right. And they have a hard time and their home environment is bad or dysfunctional or they just don't have it. So smaller settings really help these students. And like Ms. Uh, Summer said, it helped her child come to a better level than where he was, and that's what it's supposed to be about. Um, I was just wondering about the alternative students. You know, we don't want them to feel alienated or mistreated or something like that, and that's what happens, because when she, the first day we're talking about violence, I mean, these children are not violent. It might be, they might break out every once in a while with a fight. I mean, here, if you live in this neighborhood, you can understand why they bring in this, this school. So it's not like they all going to be criminals. Right. Most of them graduate and they go on to school Hang and further their education yeah. or some kind of vocational training. So my concern was mostly the kids. Right. <laughs> uh, we're about how people on campus going to treat them if they see them in the hall or if they make them feel bad or something of that sort. Sure. So I think, in short, just to cover some of that, I think it's really about educating our entire community, not just the other students and teachers inside of Southside High right. School, but our entire district and our entire community around what alternative learning means. That's right. And like you said, I mean, 49 kids just graduated, and they're going to be some amazing, um, amazing people to follow in their journeys because they're going to do great things. Right. And so considering that, I think it's really about you know, just educating people as to why we're trying to move this program. And it's really about facility use and opportunity. But I agree with what you said. And then another thing is um, addressing it. I don't know how it works in the school because I had never been in like teaching. But it needs to be addressed for like mental issues. I mean, we have a lot of mental issues, not only at alternative school, but in the whole county. Sure. And when children come in from kindergarten and they're having all these problems, it should be addressed right then. Right instead of waiting until they get so far along and then say, okay, you don't have this, this, this warning, and then they, they escalate to a farther point, and that's, then they, it, no turning back or sometimes it's hard to get them. So, you know, that's what my concern too. <laughs> well, to answer that, you may be excited to hear that we recently announced that Beaufort County Schools is one of three school districts in the state of North Carolina to receive a collaborative $8 million grant on what's called Project AWARE. And it's how we provide development opportunities for teachers and TAs and building staff to recognize the warning signs of trauma with our students. And from there, be able to develop plans of action or courses of action to help those students and their families. So we're excited to say that, you know, part of moving this program, if you look at room number four on that grid, is to really talk about that individual who's checking in with each of these students but the grant is district-wide, so starting just this coming August, uh, we'll start to see some action around how to support all of our employees to work with our students and recognize some of that trauma that our, our students are experiencing and develop a plan of action. Okay, nothing. So then, uh, uh, like, if you, like if you notice, most of the children may come from a certain environment or a certain area of the county or whatever. 
has it has it been addressed talking to parents, you know, having dialogue with parents so maybe the parents can understand why this is going I mean you can understand with parents and how to address issues with parents because it's hard to get parents in, but sometimes you have to go to the community where the parents live. Absolutely. You know, like the Boys and Girls Club, if you have a problem over here, you know, I mean, it's just you have to bring the issues to them instead of trying to get them out because then if you show it, nobody, but well, these parents don't even care about these children. They do care, but they just don't have transportation. Absolutely. They don't have so resources. You know, they might be working two jobs. Mm -hmm. It could be a lot of things. Well, I can tell you, I think we were very excited walking away from our community <coughs> event at Snowden Elementary on Tuesday night right, I heard with a similar idea where members of our board, and they can comment on it, that they really thought about how do we put a schedule in place for next school year where we do go to each community, where we are holding consistent parent forums, community forums, to really have a, a greater ear so we can develop a greater plan of response. But I really like your thinking. Okay. Then yeah, another thing, I'm, I'm gonna be finished in a minute. <laughs> fine. <laughs> fine. Another thing is, we have children that graduated from Ed Tech, yeah. and sometimes, you know, we we don't reach these children. If we'd be fine, if we could do data or find out where these children are, I mean, young adults, and let them come back and talk to the students and let them understand because they're gonna. The first thing they say, well, you don't know what I'm going through. You never been there. Oh, blah 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 blah. And so, you know, if you could get them maybe to come in, just talk to them and let them understand the road they were leading down, and then maybe it would change someone. And then maybe they could be mentors for someone, because these children need, men I mean, all children need mentors. Sure. But it, if they have a positive mentors, it would help them. And not just like once every month, but they need someone that they can call on any time they need sure. them. I like your ideas. Thank, Thank you, you very much. I appreciate it. <laughs> Thank you, Ms. Freeman Barber. Uh, anybody that doesn't know Marie, she has spent her uh, entire adult life caring for the children of Beaufort County Schools, and we appreciate her. Good afternoon. Good evening. <clears throat> I got some questions that I want to ask the boat first. Introduce yourself. I, I, I never know. get in there. <laughs> I've got some questions that I would like to ask the board. Where are you having us with these meetings? Have you ever had your staff to meet with you about this and their parents about their children? And the next thing, we wouldn't be going through this if we had a good teachers, counselors, our children don't have good counselors in school. They don't have anywhere, no one to talk to. And the other things is about it, we got staff, teachers that is on there. They're not concerned about the children. Some of them just concerned about the paycheck. And we need some teachers that have patience. We cannot help what has happened in these children home. We all have had problems. But we don't need, we say we love the children, but are you helping them by pushing them around? Mm -hmm. And another thing, we should have more patience and understanding with these children, because some of these children are really mixed up. But I have talked to both black and white children. They have went to the counselors and talked to them and talked to some of the teachers. They don't have the time for them. When you don't have time for a child the same way in your home, it puts something on that child's mind. Sure. We need to, instead of having all of us sitting in here, you need to go through your teachers because there are some of them that need to be retired. They don't have patience. Because they're just waiting for that check. That's not helping our children. I'm not in, I don't have children in school, but I am concerned about these children. And my start was right here in this school. Now you're going to push them. What are you going to do about the staff that is working in here? What are you going to do about the teachers? Are we showing, this is my last, are we showing love and dedication to the children? I don't see where you're doing it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Just 
pull it down. There you go. Good evening. Good evening. My name is Liz Shinohara, and I teach at the high schools, and I've seen some kids sent over to EdTech. But I don't know enough about its day-to-day -day running, and I've got a couple questions, and the first is just clarification. Um, what balance do they have here and now, until now, between online with facilitators and actual teachers? Because it sounds like either of the two alternatives you're proposing, that balance is going to change. Is that so? Yeah, the balance would change based off of the availability of teachers and also the budget and the allocations we have. So some of that would be a blended learning environment, whether you kept them at the school or you, or you moved the program to the alternative learning program at Southside High School, there would be a blended teaching environment. So, so yes, they'll have a teacher in front of them, they may have facilitators in front of them, but they may also have online opportunities based off of what their strengths are and what their abilities are as a student. Would they have access to teachers for the, the core requirements, the social studies, science, Mostly. math, and English? So there will be an English teacher there. There will be a math facilitator there. There will be a social studies facilitator there. Science is what we're working on right now. There's an online course for science, but as funding permits, then we'll be able to hire a science teacher. OK, then the only thing I want to say is um, I've seen kids at Washington High School primarily, but at all schools, mm -hmm. that I surely thought would drop out. Life problems, family problems, falling behind further and further each year and losing confidence and giving up. And I've seen teachers fight to get them to ed tech. Sure. And the, the faculty here that I've seen and the staff here that I've seen over the years, including the present administration, I think that what makes EdTech incredible is that the classrooms are small, the teachers know everything about the students, the administration knows everything about the students. Um, one of your past principals told me one of the things she loved most about being a principal at EdTech was that when kids come in, you just need to chill for a while to her office, she helps them with math, and she was really glad that she could get back and teach some more math. And every time I come over here and check in on my students, that's the atmosphere I see. And the two plans you're suggesting, I'm afraid that they're going to lose the access to the caring, personalized, one-on-one -on -one attention from teachers, from administration. Online, to me, seems mainly a supplemental thing. And sure. if they don't have the self-discipline to succeed in a regular classroom in Washington or Southside or Northside, I highly, highly doubt they'd have the self-discipline to succeed through online, primarily. I'd agree with that. So I'm so, wondering how you'd address that. Sorry, I'm just trying to keep the echo down. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to away. My turn on today. <laughs> so in either model that the board is looking at, you're going to have teachers, facilitators, and adults in these classrooms working with students. So yes, students may be doing online work but you'll still have the adult, the educator in the room that will be able to help them with that. It may not be direct instruction at a whiteboard for a student, but it may be actually individualized sitting right next to them. So in short, you do have qualified, certified educators who would be going to Southside High School. You just may not have as many. Like as an example right now, you already have teacher vacancies for this current program here at EdTech where people have either retired or resigned. And so we have some of those vacancies now that would collapse, so you would have a well-structured program at either one of these uh, facilities where you would still have a teacher, facilitators working in that classroom with students. Some of it would be direct instruction, some of it would be more choral uh, instruction, group instruction, and then side-by-side -side online instruction. Would the facilitators be teachers? With some of them like are. their education? Some of them are. Their yeah. background? Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. You're very thank welcome. And just for the record, the staff that works here is phenomenal. Absolutely. Absolutely. Actually, uh, that's what I was about to say. My well, name is. I, uh, I was trying to beat you to the punch because <laughs> I want you to know that's how we feel about yeah. it. My name is Stephen Menninger. I'm a middle school teacher here at the EdTech Center, and I want to start by thanking you all for having this community forum and for the people who came out tonight to speak. I just have two statements I want to make. And the first one would be that the teachers at this school, I think, are phenomenal. And I'm not just saying that because I think I'm phenomenal. I, I really don't. I think I'm 
average, but I, I've worked with people here, and I'm going to tell you, we, we deal with things at this school that teachers don't deal with at other schools. As far as caring about the students, I'm going to tell you, I get cursed at quite a bit, I get disrespected quite a bit, but I know that they're not doing that to me. They're mad at somebody else in the world, and they're just coming here to take it out on me. And I don't have a problem with that, all right? Um, so I just wanted to clarify that. And this other thing was, and this is my question is, is there going to be a, I understand the Pathways program, but is there going to be still a program for students who are administratively placed, or is that going to be handled on a different basis now? Well, I think that would be handled on a um, case by case scenario because when they're administra administratively placed, they're placed by my office specifically. So we'll have to look at what the actions were of the student that brought them to my attention and even more so what their needs would be. And so that could be a placement in Pathways. That could also be homebound instruction. That could be neutral site instruction, whatever that might be, until that child is ready to go back into their environment. All right. I thank you very much. You're welcome. Hi. My Good name evening. is Daryl Cradle, and I was raised in the city of Washington. And Washington, P.S. Jones High School has a lot of meaning, black history to us. And the way I see it right now is why I left. I left in the 10th grade because this school here had to go to Washington High. And this is my community. So I should learn my commun around my community. And I just think it's impossible for everyone to be closing down this school here when this school means so much to so many people. The other thing I want to know is it six hundred thousand dollars that you close in this school uh, that you want to take part of the program to another school for six hundred thousand? You just said you received one point some million dollars. Take some of that money and invest in our school. Wish we could. Wish I could. Unfortunately, find some more money. It's more money around. All right. It's more money around. Find some more money. All right. You find money for that. You find money for that, find money for this. All right, it's point blank. You shouldn't just move our, our education system. The next thing I know, when I come back, this just might be a convention center, not a school. This is supposed to be a school and not a convention center for our kids. Thank you. Thank You're you. Welcome. Hi. Uh, my name is Katherine Schumann, and I'm here representing uh, Teach Sports. Um, we're, we used to be primarily a homeschool sports program. Um, we've had the honor of using this facility for some of our sporting events, and we've had the privilege of having EdTech kids play with us the past couple years. Um, I have nothing but good things to say about having those kids on our team. They get mentored by our coaches. Um, whether you leave the students here or move them, would you guys still consider letting us use the gym and offering sports to the kids from the alternative education? So for the current summertime, the Board of Education will honor all of the MOUs and contractual agreements that they have, mm -hmm. but then that would be a Board of Education consideration based upon a request in the future. Okay, so we could bring those requests to you and then you guys would decide. And you can bring them to me, but or directly to the board, but if you brought them to me, I would be sharing them with the board. Okay. But Thank yes, ma'am. And I, I want to add that uh, I had the privilege and the honor of attending the graduation, well, all four of them, but um, the EdTech graduation was held at Beaufort Community College. And you could tell that these kids love their staff, love their teachers. I don't think it matters if if it's a facilitator or a principal or or who it was you could tell that they loved them the hugs and the and the wishes were just so evident um, that I was I, it was a very proud moment for me as well to see the love between the students and the staff so I know we we like to get hung up sometimes on whether a facilitator might be a certified teacher, but I don't know about y'all, but I learned a lot from my mother, probably more than anybody else. She wasn't certified in anything other than to be a mom. So let's not get hung up on that because there are facilitators all throughout Beaufort County Schools and they're doing a great job. Yes, ma'am. Um, 
I thought it was going to be like the board of commissioners and we would have three minutes. So I have my little speech written out. I'm Lynn Rogerson. I don't know if I'm still an employee of EdTech, maybe not. Um, I came to this school March 21st, 25th, 2019, and it was the eighth week of the marking period. Uh, this is my third long-term fill-in with Beaufort County, no, more than that, my third, third round at EdTech. As I became familiar with my students, their progress or their lack therefore, I determined where they were academically and it was not pretty. I was responsible to teach bi biology, earth science and physical science. Uh, thank you for the two teachers that were monitoring these classes online at Washington High School and at Northside, uh, doing the curriculum, the grading, and the grades to that date. Prior to me coming on board, these classes were monitored at EdTech by multiple subs and a facilitator in the computer lab on site in the 200 building. While I was at Southside in January and February in the occupational program, week eight of the third quarter, I had a science student, Earth, that logged in one time to his teacher at Northside. Well, when I came in the eighth week and grades are due next week, um, he has a zero because he's done nothing. And I met with him and we talked with him and it took the whole school to get him to be convinced that his teacher was no longer the one online that I was. And this is what he said, I paraphrase. He said, I don't want to work because I'm still going to fail. I asked him to just try, just try, and he did. He went from a zero in the last marking period to a 91. We completed the whole entire curriculum. He passed the exam with an 89, and I went, woohoo! But it's all about him, not me. Um, then um, I was in physical science quarter three. I had three students passing. Three. The failures were not completing the assignments in Canvas, uh, which is an online course for those of y'all who don't know what Canvas is. By the end of the academic year, I'll pass except for two. We worked very efficiently, got it done. All praise goes to my students. In biology, week eight of Q3, four students failing. Final grades in the last marking period went up 100 points. At the end, four students failed because three had high absences. I can't teach you if you don't come. Um, and one <laughs> refused to accept extra study sessions, tutoring, or help from the exceptional resource teacher. Now, here's my question to you all. When I'm going to present something, I went researching. This is what you're telling America Beaufort County is. On the Beaufort County homepage under administration section, Beaufort County School, Schools strategic page, you state every student, every classroom, every day. Well, let me tell you about those kids that don't make wise decisions. They, they bring drugs, they bring a pocket knife, they do something, and they're administratively placed somewhere else. Well, guess what? They do not have the discipline nor the consistency to pass at home. Mom goes to work if there's a mom. Uh, we have students that have told us, you know that house over there? That's the house that I was dropped at when I was six years old and I haven't seen my daddy since. 
Now that's the kind of students we have at EdTech. It's not that they're criminals to where I felt not safe. I never felt not safe. From March 25th to the end of the year, we had one fight. One, 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 one. That's all. Two girls got ill. Must have been not a good day for them. <clears throat> I, I didn't break it up. I used to. Um, if you choose to close EdTech at its current, current location, I understand the old building. I understand. I did Pitt County of 32.8 years. I'm on year 45. I don't see you focused on a quote that says every student, every classroom, every day. Uh, if you choose to put all of these children on a computer here or at Southside, online with the facilitator, it won't work. So what you've done is said, oh, excuse me, you 35, y'all are not important because we had to find $2.1 million in the budget. Please don't balance the budget on the back of our children. How many of you have sat down and spoken and carried on a conversation with any of our children since January? One. And don't come through the building and say, oh, we can shut down EdTech because I didn't see 20 students. Did you ask where the rest of them were? I, I teach 20 students second period in a combination of biology, physical science. Go figure that one too, but you know what? We got it done. They did. I didn't. I gave up my planning period. I stayed in the afternoons because I said before I came, they would do the worksheets. Why? The answers are there. You just look at the vocabulary word. You match. We did match flashcards. We did whatever it took. A vacuolo in a cell holds water. A vacuum cleaner holds trash. I told them, think of a vacuolo as a vacuum cleaner. Take your vocabulary words, draw pictures. They know what picture they drew. I don't. It's not my, my place for them, but I am not a memorizer. So when I was doing EMT training, we had to learn the kinds of shock. Well, our instructor said shrimp can. Well, to this day, S is septic. H is hemorrhagic. R is respiratory. I can go on and on and on. But our students are not memorizers, and they're not going to be successful online at home. They were not successful online at tech in the first room on the left. One more thing. Um, biology is hard. There is 135 sections with 12 units. Do you remember everything about plants and your cells and do you get your traits from your DNA or your RNA? Or how many chromosomes you have? Or the double helix or all that kind of stuff? Biology is hard. I understand you don't have a science person. That's not good. Biology is hard. So what we did when I came in, we went from where we were forward, but in the extra minutes, we went back to unit one, microscope, unit two, cells, unit three, heredity and growth, to get their average up to where they could pass at the end. I had two fail. That's because they didn't come to school. I can't teach you if you're not at school. Um, you've also stated in your strategies that you will reallocate funding and resources and explore grant opportunities. I feel you have failed a very unique group 
of young folks that need lots of inter interventions to stay out of the judicial system, get a diploma, and learn a trade. My hero, Jim Valvonich, said, don't give up. Students at 10 Ed Tech are at risk and wounded. Many of our children have said, have seen things that I hope I never see with the stories that they, they tell us. Some of them are abused, some have been raped, on and on and on and on. And we have to take this child that's way over there and bring them back. And this is a safe place to them. And for many of our students, this is their only safe place. They don't always make the right decisions. I understand balancing the budget, but like I said, don't do it on the back, please, of our students. Uh, you said, Mr. Cheeseman, that your second model was to move to Southside. We would have a principal and exceptional children's teacher and one certified teacher. I applaud my cohorts that I have worked with here that were facilitators prior to this year. What does that mean? My definition of a facilitator is you don't have a certification to become a teacher, whether it's science, math, or whatever. And you're having three facilitators. Um, I would beg to differ with you, and I would hope that if my child or my grandchild was attending Beaufort County Schools, that that person up there that's teaching my child is a certified teacher and not a facilitator. Uh, you also say on your Beaufort County board page, 3470 alternative learning programs in schools purposes. The purpose of an alternative learning program or school is to intervene and address problems to prevent a student from achieving success in the regular educational setting. Number two, to improve the risk, to reduce the risk that a student will drop out of school by providing resources to help the student resolve issues affecting his or her performance at school. Let me tell you another thing about our students you maybe don't know, they're hungry. You can't teach a child that is hungry that the last meal they had was yesterday at lunch. So what did I do? I'm a part health educator because I'm a physical education teacher also. I brought oranges, cuties. I bought a three pound bag. You have to work, I'll give you a cutie. Did the same thing at Southside. Let me tell you, those children, they'll, they'll, they'll work for a cutie or a 15 bag of chips. Y'all should come meet them. Um, Ms. Rogers. Yes. I, you know I love you, but you've gone way beyond three I'm good. <laughs> didn't I? Didn't I tell? I did tell y'all that the staff loves their children. Good evening. Good evening. Yes, ma'am. I'm Julia Lodge. Yes, ma'am. Very nice to see you. I was secretary here. Congratulations. Oh, wow. Hi, from Beaufort County Schools. And really, in truth, when I talk to people, I like looking at everybody. To begin with, I worked with Beaufort County Schools probably 18 years. I graduated from Washington High School in 1974. I don't have many questions. I just have lots of experiences that I've gone through. Some of these kids, I mean, you can't help but see. You, can't, you don't, we're, we're not dumb. Some of these kids that come here are already labeled. They're targeted. That's true. And it just really, I, I don't even know, it, it astonishes me 
that a middle grade or fourth, fifth grade child has got to come to an alternative school. So, we've got counselors. We're supposed to have professionals. We have teachers. We have principals. But let me tell you something that I've experienced with principals, some of these principals. You can look at them wrong, and they're ready to send you out the door to ed tech or to find another job. Now, we need to come together as a whole community, the board. Stop sugarcoating, stop saying all these sweet things and going out the door and leave, just, just leaving it right here. It's, it's frustrating. Yep, they need an alternative school for some of these children. I've seen some of the richest white kids, some of the poorest black kids, some of the richest black kids, some of the poorest white kids. It's an, a, a whole conglomeration of children. And you sit and you can talk to some of them, and really and truly, they feel like they weren't even given a chance to start with at their regular school. I think this goes farther than closing the ed tech. Um, these are our children. I don't have children in school now, but let me tell you something. I have cried a many a night over these kids. They didn't have shoes. They didn't have food. They didn't have this or they didn't have that. And let me tell you, I am by no means on this salary and that little Social Security check, got no whole lot of money. But I have really sacrificed and bought for these kids just so they will feel normal, somewhat normal. And all these grown-ups sitting around here, yeah, I mean, it's their, their kids. Granted, your kids might, you might not have nobody, in, but they're still kids. They're still our kids. They belong to all of us. And there's no point in mistreating this one because you dislike a, a parent or a cousin or who. <coughs> Y'all, it just amazes me. This thing really starts at the top. It really starts at the top. And you can sit here all day long if you want to and, and, and say, you know, we're going to close the Ed Tech Center. <coughs> what are you going to do with those children? I understand what you're going to do with those children. Some of them really shouldn't have even been here to start with. If they were counseled properly, if they were treated properly with respect, that's all most of them. And they're, they're, the education is free. But, and excuse me, but it's, it's like we're all grown, but you got to go through hell to go to school. You got to go through hell to get a job. What, what, what's wrong with this place? This is Washington. I left and went to ECU and worked 12 and a half years and came back here and said, and let me tell you this, when I left, I had applied for a job as a secretary <laughs> and told that I was overqualified, went to ECU and got a better job, but came back here, applied for somewhat the same job, and I finally got it after all those years. I, I, I mean, this is, yes, I'm, I'm, I'm older, but there is, there, there are some major, major problems in this community. It's not, it, 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 it's not even about ed tech. It's about our board, our county commissioners, our communities. Some of these parents I've seen, I want to put in jail myself. <laughs> I mean, really and truly. Some of these teachers, I would love to fire. Some of these principals, they're not even, I would love to fire them. Because you're not, you're not being truthful, not even to yourselves. And it's going to always be an uproar. Always going to be something. They've been trying to, well, when these other two principals were here, they hardly had anything to even work with. You had to beg and plead for just supplies. The schools wouldn't send us books with the children. How do you expect them to learn? You, we done paid for them books. Those books should have came with them children. They shouldn't have to have a second class book or a book from four or five years ago. 
It don't bring them up current to, to, to what's being taught in the school today. There's lots of issues. Welcome to Beaufort County. Mr. Thank you very much. <laughs> Come on, Miss Lodge. We don't want him to run away. <laughs> we, I said, come on, we don't want him to run away. We just got him. <laughs> Hello. Hi. Um, I'm Krista Horn, and I teach here at EdTech in the middle school, and I just have a couple questions. Um, I haven't heard much about what you're going to do with um, – administratively placed middle school students but that's all we we have in our classroom we don't have pathway kids um, and I know that our middle school kids um, won't be successful online um, <clears throat> homebound we had one student this year that started with us you know carried a C or B in class with the one-on-one -on -one instruction but then he got put on homebound and he had a zero by the end of the um, school year because he did none of his work online. So um, also the K-5 program, I've watched them the whole entire year and those teachers are phenomenal. They have changed kids from cussing and beating walls to going back to their home school visiting or going back for a couple of hours but where is that program going? It's kind of the, well, the programs will stay intact. They'll be relocated to other facilities, and the board will see a plan on Tuesday. So the middle school is going to have a separate location than so the high school. All three program. of these, all three of these programs will stay intact. Now, your middle school model currently has seven students in that middle school model, but it refreshes at the beginning of next year. So as you start next year, you actually have zero students in the middle school model. So as we develop that model, we'll, we'll ask the board for a finalized decision on placement. So right. as they get placed, we'll create a... Not as they get placed. We'll create a, a very specific location with a viable program this summertime that the board will look at some of those options. Okay. So when we do have students qualify for that program, we already know where they're going and who's okay. going to be working with and them. And what about K-5? K-5 right they, now... I mean, they're an awesome program. No, I so mean, I've actually, seen those kids. We love that program, and, and I don't want anyone to walk away thinking we don't love any of these programs. Right. But since you're talking about K-5 specifically, absolutely agree with everything you said about the K-5 program and what the adults do with the students and for the students and even vice versa, what the students teach mm -hmm. the adults. Um, so considering, yes, the board will see um, a suggestion as to where to place that program for next year. Um, but we do have a, a solution and they'll see that on Tuesday as a first read. Okay. And um, also with the high school working online, that whole scenario, um, I know that I helped several high school students this year that were struggling online math. Um, and during my planning or after school, I would take these kids and work um, to show them, you know, that one-on-one -on -one instruction on how to do that math. Um, and so, I feel like an online program is going to be kind of hard for those students. Well, I agree with you um, that nothing replaces a, a teacher. Right. The relationship between a teacher and a student and having taught for 14 years, chemistry and forensic science, I understand mm -hmm. the complexity of mathematics and mm -hmm. science, um, being a trained scientist. But what I can tell you is um, the facilitators that would be moving to Southside High School are already the facilitators who are here who have already been working with all of our children here. Right. So these are not new individuals who don't know how to manipulate the instruction inside the classroom and also online. But I agree with you, there's no greater talent than a teacher. Okay. And do we, do y'all know that most of our students, our high school students, were walkers to the school? I'm aware. Okay. Um, and specifically, that's where we're looking at our transportation options. Okay. And in terms of timeline of coming back and forth and what that would look like. Okay. But I'm also aware that not all of our students are from Washington, so we right. need to keep that in mind, too. Yeah. All right. All thank right. you. Thank, thank you very you. much. Do we have anybody else that uh, wanted an opportunity to speak? If not, we'll like close. To. Yes, ma'am. Come right on up. I'm Georgia Smallwood. I'm a Smallwood. I'm a small Hi, how are you? Good. As I've listened, the one thing that kind of worries me is this question here. How receptive are the students going to be to the idea of you disturbing them from ownership of a school 
because we always say my school and you're sending them to their school now the programs that you have given the accommodations they sound really really beautiful but have you thought about how receptive the kids are going to be to this first of all I have come to EdTech and as I walk in this building I there is one thing that I felt and that was those kids they felt included they felt welcomed but I don't see them feeling welcome into a place where they were isolated off to themselves and I know that's the best best place I mean I like that Thank but you. we also have to think of feeling nobody wants change sure these kids are already emotionally socially academically and of course we can go on so why would you put them in a state of mind I've heard several people say that absentee was a problem if I'm not comfortable at a school that you're sending me to and you're taking me out of my comfort zone how do you think I'm going to react there and ever who goes to high side I'm not talking about you because I know you are a good place but I'm just talking about how do you think this is going to affect their behavior sure. because that is one thing that really concerns me you know at Ed Tech I notice this school has been a great life changing option and I've heard it from so many different people and not only have I heard it I have seen it here I've even talked to kids and I even when my husband and I visit out here I say did you I even said to the principal where is she <coughs> I said <laughs> oh there she is <laughs> I said these kids feel so comfortable here this is their home this is ownership to them they will never accept Southside as theirs because they are being transitioned someplace else. And, and another thing I had up here. This school, and I've talked to this little boy, I wish I knew his name. He said to me, this is where I found my way. And I'm thinking, what in the world <coughs> has happened that he had to be transmitted from a non-traditional school to a school that is, I mean, from a traditional school to a non-traditional school, and he found his way in a non-traditional school and couldn't find his way in a traditional school. Southside is a traditional school. I don't see how even in a separate wing that you can take a child from who has already been in a traditional school, couldn't work in that traditional school, and send them back there. I, I, I mean, uh, the program sounds good, and it, but my feeling is how are these children, the effect of it on the children, effect of the move. So Ms. Smallwood, if you don't mind, I'll, go ahead and you can see, and I'll respond to some of this. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, let me say this, and, and I need you to understand. <clears throat> so I'm from New Jersey, I'm from Pennsylvania, I'm from California, I'm from Illinois, and I'm from North Carolina and West Virginia. I've been in many places of the country, including Philadelphia, Chicago, Oakland, Sacramento, and Charlotte. I've seen a lot of things, and I've seen a lot of behaviors. So I absolutely agree with you when you talk about emotionally, socially, and academically. And when you talk specifically about life-changing opportunities and life-changing options, and when kids come here, they get connected to it. Yes. But remember, in this program, as a Pathways program, a majority, if not nearly all, don't start here. So they have to make a transition out of their school into a new environment. Now, considering that, one of the greatest ways of students becoming part of that environment is the relationships they build with the adults that love them and care for them, including Principal Vicki Hamill, including the teachers that will be there. So when I look at this opportunity, I don't look at brick and mortar. And yes, they'll be down a hallway, and they won't be in a huge school, but they will have still their own school in a sense of um, 
you know, the relationships that they have with their educators, the relationships they'll have with their families. But when you talk about, you know, finding their way, our students don't find their way through brick and mortar. They find their way through the educators that provide the opportunity of that tough love at times, who grab them and hug them and squeeze them and say, you are going to sit down and learn, who check on them after school and before school. And I understand the value of ed tech, the building. I understand there is a historical perspective to it. I would love to protect that. But at the same time, I have the authority and the, the challenge of making sure children learn. And when I look at that versus the business of education versus the education of what happens in the classroom, you can almost ask any teacher. They believe they can teach students inside a building, outside of a building, in a park, in a parking lot. You ask any teacher. They believe they can teach children anywhere. So I understand that there's feelings about the brick and mortar and the environment, and I certainly have the greatest respect for that. But in short, what I'm trying to do is put a request to the board to consider two options. And in that second option that we're talking about right now, sure, it might be in the brick and mortar of Southside High School, but they're forever going to have those relationships with the teachers, the facilitators, and the other students who know what ed tech is. Kids and are going to feel ostracized. They might. You have those kids. They we're might. Not, I mean, we're not going to debate this because we no. don't have time. That's fine. But those kids are going to feel ostracized because I, I know I know students. I taught for 43 years. Sure. And I know they are going to feel ostracized over there because I know kids. Kids are not good to each other. Right. They are terrible. Right. <laughs> so are adults. And those kids that think we are. This is our school, and they have put them in our school. Sure. And I know that if those kids are going to have to go to school with that on their minds every day. And you know what? Attendance is not going to be good. Sure. <coughs> Hello, everybody. So my name is Barbara Gaskins. Hey, Barbara. Um, and um, your superintendent? Yes, ma'am. Okay. As of today, yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Don't want to run you away. I might away, not be invited back tomorrow by a few. Sorry, but there we got, go. got some questions now. <laughs> so um, piggybacking off Miss Smallwood. Yes, ma'am. Um, so you're from the city. So uh, I'm actually from many well, different places. But, oh, yeah. okay. I'm but, actually from the country. Okay. Well, yeah. you you Been stay, around. so you'll understand what I'm saying. Yes, ma'am. Go ahead. So okay. So what you're doing? What the concept of these children are yes, um, inner city mm -hmm. in their own little area sure. and then you have the rest of the city yes ma'am so what that that's kind of what is going to happen if they go to south side okay. so they're in their little area and then they got the rest of the school sure okay um, as far as your teachers yes ma'am what type of trainings are you going to give these teachers Excellent. in order to deal with these behaviors what kind of trainings are you going to give these police officers to deal with these children? In addition, have you thought about the, pr the school to prison pipeline? How is that going to be affected? Mm -hmm. Are you trying to dismantle it? How is Washington or Beaufort County going to deal with that? That's a good question. Have, have you talked to uh, Raleigh to see if they could offer some ideas? Mm -hmm. All great suggestions that I'll research for you. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. And I'm going to let uh, Ms. Carroll be our last speaker. Good evening. Good evening. I am John East Carroll, former educator here at Beaufort County School, where I've Carol. invested 24 years of my life here, yeah, and as well as raised three children that graduated um, Washington High School. I've always and will always will be an advocate for children, but let me just say this before I have um, my words. This is the fourth time we've seen you all in a month so that's very good so thank you so much for the opportunity to really come together and partner to answer these very important questions alternative learning is now is very important and it did not just start with this facility um, my first experience was when we had um, some children that scored very low in at PS Jones ones and twos where it was very difficult in a regular classroom to teach so we decided three teachers that we would have classes that would provide the needs for these children in a smaller setting where they could be successful. 
So that was my first experience with alternative learning. But the thing that bothered me was because they were still in an environment that did not understand them, they were gawked at and they were uh, judged. So I agree with Sister Smallwood, uh, Miss Smallwood, I'm sorry, this is my church name for <laughs> Miss Smallwood, that um, community is very important to the success of all of our children. And the children that do well in a larger setting, uh, they're going to they're going to be fine wherever, but the sense of community and identity is very important. Because even uh, some of the children that were in the class was not behavior problems. Right. Some of them needed smaller one-on-one uh, -on -one time. They needed an opportunity to have someone to believe in them. And when we believe in them in the area in which they can perform the best, they will do great things. And uh, at the end of that term, we, we uh, looped up. We, we stayed with them for two years. And um, we were able to see the success of these children because we were able to keep our hands and our eyes on them, which I think alternative learning provides for these students. So what I'm saying is do not take away the sense of community to these children that I think is very critical to their being successful because this is a place where they felt safe and I want to commend the principal of graduating 45 students this year uh, along with the teachers. I think that is commendable as well. Absolutely. I know there's a solution but again the children's needs are very important and I'm, I do believe that you have them um, at hand but I don't think it's going to help them if you take away their sense of community by moving them somewhere else. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ms. Carroll. I said no more, but I guess I need to let Mr. Booth. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Ed. Go ahead. Thank you. I'm Ed Booth. I'm not a commissioner. I'm not speaking for the Board of Commissioners. And the reason I waited last is because I wanted to hear somebody say what this gentleman said. Where there was $1.2 million that was allocated for uh, academy, it's gone. The other thing I want to know, if you look at the R. Ed study, look, Google, the, Google the computer and look up Beaufort County O-R-E-D study. Nowhere, nowhere in that study did it mention Ed Tech. I commend you. I call you. And I talk to you. I commend you highly for defending your school. I commend you, and I stand with you arm to arm. And this is the reason I still to say this. It's not necessary to close this school. It's not necessary. It's a cop out. We are taught, we are taught as elected officials, get the low hanging fruit. The people that got the least resistance, that's who you beat on. If I was gonna fight somebody here tonight, I would get here. <laughs> I'd get somebody I knew I could beat. And Butch, if they ever go at your school, I stand with you, shoulder to shoulder, and I will ask these people to come with me. If they're thought about closing Northside like the, like the OREB study said, we couldn't have a meeting in here tonight. You'd have to have it at the football field. This is wrong, it's wrong, it's wrong, and, you, and let me ask you something else. Can you catch a green pig? Thank you. Good. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Booth. Um, once again, I want to thank everybody for uh, coming out tonight. I appreciate all your comments and your input. Uh, we are a community, and we will give this a tremendous amount of thought and consideration. Um, I want to thank Ms. Harrell uh, for letting us use her media center tonight. Uh, and if there are no, do I have any further comments from the board before we close? All right. Uh, thank you again, and we'll consider this forum closed. Have a good evening. It's it's not raining now, so you might can. You know. Oh, uh, excuse me. I want to let Mr. Lewis say a little something real quick. Just a couple minutes. Go County NACP. We're here to help you if we can. We did bring some snacks for you to take with you. We weren't sure how long we'd be here, so there's some snacks and some water. Nice. Thank you.